you would find how people search on Amazon and Flipkart versus how people search on City Mall, like chop and cheese. Very, very, very different. So how do you get that 400 rupee order at the doorstep of a customer, give him value, better price on that product and make money? And to be able to do that, you need to create a, a very different type of network that is fundamentally lower cost. Today, we have someone who has been a serial entrepreneur with over a decade of experience in the Indian startup ecosystem. He's the CEO and a co-founder of City Mall, a social e-commerce platform that envisions unlocking the power of e-commerce for next 500 million internet users of Bharat. And before City Mall, he also co-founded two companies. One, Hawker, a B2B e-commerce platform connecting the Kiranas back to its supply partners. And second, B2 Innovation, a SaaS platform to help the brand achieve their field sales and distribution goals. He's also a prominent angel investor, has invested more than 10 startups like DSLR, AppBrew, Vectec, Trapclan, and Produce. So all the dropshipping teams get ready with your pitches. You might get your first investment today. So let's have a big round of applause for Angad Kekla. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you guys. Great. So today we'll be keeping the session a bit more casual and interactive. We all have, we all are very curious to learn about your experiences, your personal experiences, good or bad, and how they have shaped you as a person. At the end, we'll also open the floor for the questions for the audience to ask any of the questions, any of the queries they have. Sure. Right? So all good? All good. Yes. Perfect. So let's get started. Angad, you completed your graduation from IIT Delhi, MBA uh, from IMM, right? I think having that IIT and IM on your CV have, would have made you the most eligible bachelor <laughs> back in your time, right? Back in my time. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife would be very happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes apart, I'm really keen to know about your journey and your background. Cool. So, uh, so very like norm normal journey. Uh, I come from a small middle class business family uh, based out of Surat. So I was born and brought up in Surat. Uh, yeah, like my, my dad runs like a small uh, transport business. My mother is a homemaker. Uh, growing up, you know, all, all, all the value systems that you get uh, as a uh, as, as a middle class family, right? Uh, that, that's what I've been through. I think a couple of things that really shaped up uh, my journey early on. One was uh, sort of seeing my father sort of struggle with the, with the variabilities of running like a very small business in India. Uh, so it was like, ki humare ghar pe yaar mood, how my dad's day was at office dip, was completely pegged to how you know, our mood at home would have been. Like, you know, when the mood is good, lights are on. When the mood is not, hey, why matlab, light kyun chalo, bhai, Diwali hai kya <laughs> So those type of things. So that, that really sort of uh, got me, got me thinking into your uh, running a business is, is tough. Uh, in fact, while growing up, I never wanted to do any, any kind of startup, to be honest. Uh, so that was one, uh, like very middle class uh, values. Uh, the other thing that really shaped up uh, my value system growing up uh, was sports. So I was a, I was a national DD player. I played multiple uh, other sports. Uh, and I think that really, really shaped up uh, uh, my value system uh, and, 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 and the journey forward. Uh, unfortunately, I had to give up professional sports uh, to be focused, to focus on academics and then eventually get a job. Uh, thanks to thanks to all, you know, uh, middle class families of, of the 90s, you know how it is. Uh, but yes, uh, that, that's sort of been wow. my, my background. That's quite a journey. Lev, I really wanted to know if you want to play a TT with our uh, people because we have quite a few players around in this space. Well, I can do that. <laughs> so, uh, performance pressure, over, but it's okay. <laughs> But no, we really also wanted to know how did you found your calling when you started your, you know, I think you transitioned from your first uh, BCG to Accenture and then, you know, starting your first company, Hawker. How that yeah. the transition happened? Actually, uh, actually, story goes long back. Uh, I, I gave up professional sports uh, to focus on academics. I was into academics to get a good job. So I got through IIT uh, where my ambition was to get a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a decent job. But then major FOMO, ho gaya. we were talking about it. Ke my, all my friends were at iBanks and consultings and I was doing this manufacturing job uh, six days in a week, wearing safety shoes and the uniform. And I was, I was sort of not liking it. So to overcome that FOMO, uh, I did my MBA. 
uh, got through the best job possible, which was BCG then. Uh, first three months were great while I was collecting my air miles uh, and, and hotel, hotel, whatever, vouchers. Uh, and after that, I had an identity crisis that, hey, this is really not what I want to do. I wasn't enjoying consulting as much. Uh, and the best part was that I was, I also sucked at. So I was a bad consultant who did not like consulting. So the answer was very clear that, hey, this is not for me. Uh, and that's where the inflection point uh, came. <coughs> what to do next? Uh, and that's when I read about Silicon Valley startups. This was back in 2012, 2013. Uh, uh, Flipkart, uh, Sachin, Vinny were my seniors from IIT Delhi. I thought, okay, these guys are doing something interesting. Uh, maybe I should, I should try something around it. So the entire journey into, uh, into starting up was because I wasn't enjoying uh, doing a job. Uh, that, that's, that, that's like the honest, honest reason. Uh, also, you know, it sort of came back to me that, hey, left professional sports to get a good job. Now I'm not liking a good job. Uh, but then I think it, it turned out decent. <laughs> Wow. Well, you spoke about IIT Delhi. I think Sachin was your, you know, senior and everything. I always wondered, like, IIT Delhi had, like, so many good founders. And then we have seen so many great founders coming from IIT Delhi. Was there a secret sauce somewhere? And how did it happen? I think there is no causation to this correlation. I think I've seen uh, equally good entrepreneurs from uh, from Bits, uh, IIT Khadapur, other IITs. Uh, probably, you know, a little bit of uh, you see your seniors and then you want to do something around that. But that's like a very uh, short term effect uh, mm -hmm. from an overall journey perspective, the way it's shaped up. I don't see uh, IIT Delhi uh, different from from any other IITs, except for the fact that few more successful uh, IIT Delhi entrepreneurs have come up. So you have more role models in, in that sense, but but nothing structurally there. Oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah. Um, in I have another very very thing that I always saw is like majority of the companies in this era is are you know planning to start something in tier one or metro cities only. How did you end up thinking about starting a city mall in tier two or tier three cities? Well, what was the idea? Got it. So again, uh, not planned. Uh, it was a discovery process, and which is I'm sure. How, how many of you guys want to become entrepreneurs? Wow. Very nice. We got a few. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so entrepreneurship, you know, it's a game. Right? Uh, in, the, in the sense, uh, it, it's, it's a discovery process. So, you do something, you find, okay, 5% of it is working, 95% of it is not working. So, you double down on that 5%, get to the next idea. You see, hey, now 25% of it is working, but 75% is not working. And you then double down on that 25% to build on top of it. So a lot of uh, the entrepreneurship uh, that you would see uh, is a discovery process in itself. Almost all successful startups have pivoted. Uh, we, we, know, we know all of them, right? All yeah. of them have pivoted. Yeah. So my, my journey was very similar, uh, Webov. I started with a logistics, intra-city logistics yeah. business uh, that there was no problem to be solved there. But we figured out that hey, intracity logistics a lot of our demand was coming from uh, from these distributors selling to retail stores, uh, and and they would want uh, our trucks to be delivering those products. So we said that hey, why can't we become growers for uh, these small kirana stores? So we pivoted logistics into a B two B e commerce idea uh, that was shaping up well. Uh, but then competition raised a lot of money. We couldn't raise money. We ran out of money uh, and we had to shut it down. Uh, but from there, the other idea that came in is that a lot of this transaction between distributors and retailers happen through these sales guys and companies have a huge problem in, you know, tracking and understanding what their sales teams are doing. So we pivoted into building a software business uh, for these sales guys, <laughs> more of a Salesforce automation. So that business, uh, again, was doing well. Uh, we expanded from India to Southeast Asia. It was a good, profitable business, uh, but the market size was capped. Uh, it, it wasn't like exploding and growing really, really fast then. So I, I decided to sort of take an exit from that business, 
and start city mall and when i started city mall i as well literally had written down okay i don't know what's going to work but i may have some idea of what's not going to work so let's list down all the mistakes that we've made uh, so that ye idea mein wo wali mistake nahi honi chahiye so things like you know the market should be obvious uh uh and uh, the market should be big don't want to work in like a small tiny tiny market uh, team is super critical so let's let's build the right team out uh and that that's how we started city mall and that's when in fact one of the inflection points was uh, this was back in 2018 19 uh, i went back to surat uh, to my hometown and 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 i saw my mother buying something on whatsapp so I was like hey who buys products on whatsapp uh, this is not real so then when i sort of digged further i realized that okay there was a reseller of misho selling to my to my mother through whatsapp uh and that that's when sort of uh, you know realized that okay bharat solving for bharat tier 3 tier 4 towns in rural india is is definitely going to be a big market uh there is no way 5 10 years down the line these guys are not going to be on e-commerce uh so so let let's build for them so very very sort of it was discovery process one led, one thing led to the another wow. and still ended up making a lot of mistakes and what was your unique approach in the sense of competing with the giants like Amazon, Flipkart, and even Meesho for that matter. Even. Yeah. So, uh, so our, our approach was very interesting in a way that if if you look at e-commerce in India, uh, they are like highly centralized platforms. Right? There is Amazon, and there are all these consumers. Uh, but we thought that what if we can democratize the power of e-commerce into every small micro entrepreneur living in these really small towns and villages in India. so think about it like you know why can't uh like a like a uh like a barber in a in a community who is a super hustler uh, run an e-commerce business uh, in his own areas and communities uh, so that was the idea so how can we sort of you know decentralize and de- democratize the entire e-commerce experience uh, which is suitable for the bharat audience yeah. uh, while we are okay with uh, you know going and sort of Uh, ordering on on Amazon or Flipkart, but when you look at consumers living in small town rural India, they want to build trust. Uh, they want somebody who who they can really you know trust while they are while they are buying something. Yeah. So these micro taking like a democratized, leveraging the power of micro entrepreneurship in India was was our call. Oh wow! And uh, in terms of like, can you also help me because you were dealing with tier two, tier three cities people. what was the difference between in the consumer behavior in the sense of from tier 1 cities and because you were targeting in more in terms of like these micro entrepreneurs yeah. how did they have the approach so very very different uh, so fundamentally if you look at consumers living in metro and tier 1 coming from sort of high mid to high income brackets prefer price before choice sorry prefer convenience before choice before price so we we use like blinkit we use uh, instamart we do use all of those what are we saying that we we want convenience man ki yaar kitna time wait nahi kar sakte we just want products in in the next 10 to 15 minutes but when you look at consumers in smaller towns rural india highly value conscious they are di- diametrically opposite they prefer price before choice before convenience so to create a platform that is extremely price sensitive for that customer base is 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 like a big uh is is big uh, difference in the consumer behavior the second big difference that i see is uh actually disposable income uh yaar hum log kuch order karte hain hamari jeb se 1000 1500 ka order ho jata hai aaram se right if you go and talk to uh, people living in rural small town india they would say that max that they can order is 300 400 rupees they it's beyond them to actually have a transaction of 1200 1500 rupees because their wallet balances are always super low they have to manage their working capital household uh, earning about 20 25000 rupees per month usme yaar ghar ka rent hai bachcho ki padhai hai ration hai so they are running on very like a shoestring budget uh, so managing their cash flow and working capital is is a big deal for them and that's one of the big reasons why kirana stores exist because because they give credit they're solving the working capital problem of of these consumers 
so that that's that's another big uh, actually the fundamental disposable income bahut badi uh, bahut bada factor we we are like we are living in a bubble we are operating like average americans to be honest uh while then there is my family in surat who is operating like an average chinese consumer but the belly of india which is like an average indian uh behaves and acts very very differently oh wow well and in that sense um my one of the questions is like can you explain a bit about these micro entrepreneurs that you were reaching out uh, to how did you approach them how did they take up and how they supply to end consumer over there sure so uh so there are two types of micro entrepreneurs uh, that at least we see uh, on our platform and by and large you would see similar kinds one are these you know households housewives or maybe husband but they operate like a very small family business ki yaar wo husband theek hai kahin naukri kar raha hai but the wife is helping in farming customers upselling cross selling products husband is helping in sort of uh, doing doing the logistics acquiring few customers here and there yeah. uh so a typical household small very small family business where husband wife children chacha tao everybody is sort of helping helping in a way to sort of generate income uh fundamentally disposable time is very high in these markets disposable income is very low so any proposition that converts the disposable time into disposable income uh they would sort of latch on to it so that that that's that's one profile uh the other type of mi- micro entrepreneurs that we see on our platform web of is uh people who are already running some business but theek hai yaar free time hai main carpenter hu din bhar main wahi reels tiktok ye sab karta hu i have i have free disposable time and i also have couple of chotus with me uh so how can i convert my again my free time i'm already an entrepreneur i'm doing carpentry etc but i have time i will convert that time into sort of running this side hustle uh on on city mall so these are two profiles you know already existing micro entrepreneurs or or your or your sort of housewives or uh-huh. households and something that i was going through that um few of your profiles and have started earning way beyond 10000 rupees right now yeah. and somewhere around 2 i think there are 2000 micro entrepreneurs right now earning way more yeah. way more than what 10000 and like 11000 yeah that's like a dated information now, now that number is now is becoming pretty really high yeah. what and, and this because dealing with such entrepreneurs i think it's it's a exciting journey for you right yeah. and but what is what is the you know the most that surprises you about your job like uh, something that you really excited about it's it's actually uh, it's actually very humbling to uh, look at these uh, entrepreneurs I'll, i'll give you a uh, an incident that that sort of has shaped up lot about what what i do uh, so there was like a uh, like a micro entrepreneur a housewife housewife plus husband dono karte the uh, they were based out of jhajjar now i don't know anyone of you from jhajjar here Sorry? anyone from jhajjar Have you heard of Jajjar? Yes. It's a small town. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so very, very small town in Haryana. So this guy, uh, we used to go and deliver to these micro entrepreneurs. Micro entrepreneurs used to then sort of do some bulk break and make the deliveries to the end consumers. Now, one of these days, uh, our delivery boy went to uh, went and delivered to these micro entrepreneurs, and this uh, household couple was living on the third floor. It was like a small building type. They were third floor. They were living. and delivery boy refused to deliver on the third floor our bad our mistake so his housewife came down sort of picked up the product went to the third floor did all the bulk breaking and then uh, then one day this guy comes uh, to our office uh, and says ki sir thoda sa uh, problem ho gaya ghar pe like kya hua yaar batao yaar what happened He said uh, my wife had a miscarriage uh, so she was she was expecting a baby uh but uh, you know she had to actually pick up all those products go uh, and she had she had this unfortunate incident i was i was shocked uh and then i said okay then why didn't you tell me what did you do he said uh well i was sad and all of that but now life is sorted i said how he said maine apna ghar jo hai third floor se ground floor pe le gaya so earning that 10 12000 rupees per month was so important for this guy hmm. that i he he decided to not leave the platform but to change where where he was living 
to be able to sort of uh, you know continue continuous living so when you go to these small towns and rural uh, places uh, i think there is lot of hunger uh, there's lot of uh, ambition uh, but they are limited by opportunities so anything that that sort of builds opportunities uh, for these guys uh, i i think uh, theek hai uh, business ek cheez hai but your heart needs to be at the right place to to be running a business like this so so that that was like a very very touching incident for for me i think we also have a video for you i think yeah. we figured out that there was few uh, impact stories that we were able to uh, see and if you can yeah, let's, someone, let's play that let's play that video for everyone नमस्कार मेरा नाम नरेश कुमार विलेज उम्मेदगढ़ जिला सोनीपत मैं भी पहले एक कंपनी में काम करता था दो साल पहले मेरा एक एक्सीडेंट हो गया था रोड एक्सीडेंट उसमें मैं अपना पैर गवा चुका हूँ उसके बाद सिटी मॉल कंपनी के साथ में जुड़ा मैंने लीडरशिप ली लीडरशिप लेने के बाद मेरे कंपनी ने इतना सपोर्ट किया कि पहले मैं मतलब बिल्कुल घर पे खाली बैठा रहता था काम करने का कोई मेरे पास जरिया नहीं था लेकिन फिर उसके बाद मैंने सोचा कि कुछ काम करूं तो क्या करूं? मेरे को सिटी मॉल ने एक काम दिया है जिसमें मैंने लीडरशिप मिली है लीडरशिप लेने के बाद वहाँ से सामान मंगाया लोगों तक पहुंचाता हूं, और एक मेरा दोस्त है अरुण खान नाम है उनका वो हर तरह से मेरे को सपोर्ट करते हैं उनसे मैं आपको मिलवाता हूँ ये मेरा दोस्त है मेरा भाई है इसने कभी मेरे को ये महसूस नहीं होने दिया कि तेरा एक्सीडेंट में पैर गवा चुका है मेरे को हर तरह से सपोर्ट करता है डिलीवरी में मेरी हेल्प करता है और नए कस्टमर बनाने में मेरी हेल्प करता है और ये ये जो लोगो है ये सिर्फ लोगो नहीं है ये एक ब्रांड है इसने मेरे चेहरे पे वो खुशी दी है कि मैं आपको मतलब बता तो सकता हूँ लेकिन जाहिर नहीं कर सकता मेरे को सिटी मॉल कंपनी ने अपने पैरों पर खड़ा होने का एक मौका दिया है धन्यवाद हंगर लेवल ऑफ ऑफ भारत ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स इज इज नेट लेवल आई थिंक वेन वेन वी मीट दैम वी फील दैट वी आर लिविंग इन अ बबल Wow. and so angit again seeing all this like it's it's really heart touching but what's the vision for you in terms of city mall so uh, so like like you saw our vision is to empower the ambition of bharat uh, which means that anyone who is who wants to work hard who wants to sort of uh, do something for a living who wants to become independent uh, independent financially independent entrepreneur Uh, we see our our vision that we are in the service of anybody who wants to uh, who wants to earn a living who wants to sort of become an entrepreneur we are in a service of helping them becoming that so so that's how we see and anything that empowers their ambition is is what our vision is aligned with and where we can see uh, you know city mall in next 10 years what's the growth trajectory you guys are aiming at so next 10 years uh, well our ambition is to be become biggest e-commerce company in india uh and that's that's what we aspire to uh and we are growing fast uh, and it's it's not uh, i i truly believe that it's it's not like a a dream uh, but but it it is something that has a sort of practical legs to it uh, because we are operating in the in the largest market uh, you see bharat if you look at india india is about what uh 600 million internet users 600 to 700 million internet users about 4 to 500 million of them are on whatsapp about 300 million are on facebook uh, how many unique transacting users would you find on any of the e-commerce platforms here about 100 million and usme bhi if you look at 
like meaningfully transacting online that number would be like less than 20 million so there's a huge population of india that's completely untouched by e-commerce because they are very different from the top 10 20 million people like us uh, so to build a platform for the next 200 300 million people it needs to sort of leverage uh, a very different type of power uh, of trust uh, and that's what we are building wow and matlab in terms of uh, reaching to these masses matlab how today's youth and young leaders can help you achieve in that like because again we have been in master in we really want to be in, be a part of this experience and how we can help it sure so uh, one thing that's sort of personally uh, very exciting for me uh, in fact we were when we were discussing i was asking about what's the north star of master union yeah. uh, so more entrepreneurs uh, is in complete line with in in line with you know what our vision and mission is because our our vision is to sort of empower the an ambition of more and more entrepreneurs so you know my so my take on you know what Uh, what you know, so something that that sort of in in line with what our vision is to sort of take up on entrepreneurship. Uh, it's it it is, it is super exciting uh, and creating your own identity, helping helping generate jobs is is a very different thing from sort of uh, being one of them. So uh, so my appeal is that अभी जितने लोगों ने हाथ रेस किया था यार, everybody should become an entrepreneur. Yeah. and and like it's it's sort of a discovery process uh, but you will uh, apart from you know discovering what the business should be you would also discover yourself much better in that journey oh wow now talking about all the positives here i think you should also seem look at like what were the most difficult times for you while building uh, you know city mall or also the last two companies as well as yeah so the most <laughs> yes the most difficult was to convince Uh, my family for six more months. Okay, give me six more months. So I would have taken like uh, at least what ten extensions of six more months before my family <laughs> gave up on those extensions. So, uh, so yeah, so the difficult part was actually uh, convincing your loved ones that okay, I am failing, but I am also learning. What people see is that you fail, hmm. but uh, but. majority people don't see is you're also learning in that process and that 5% delta improvement is happening with every every attempt that you make uh so yeah the difficult part is sort of convincing them before people give up and it's okay people give up so that's fine so oh, crazy um one of the one of the questions i also have is like uh, because uh, our first again i i think i was telling you this in our term one we are given this challenge of drop shipping Right, we I think forty plus dropshipping companies will be coming out of this batch. Yeah. Do you have any ideas and any you know, suggestions for us? Because I think a similar model that you guys are dealing in. Uh -huh. So any suggestions that how we can collaborate with uh, tier two, tier three cities people? So yeah, uh, it's actually uh, highly synergistic for us uh, because uh, you would typically uh, do those dropshipping by having some some network of people uh, who would be doing those dropshippings. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are also sort of we are in the business of sort of creating those networks as well so uh, you can sort of build it out in city mall outside city mall we can collaborate you can sort of leverage our partners as as your drop shippers uh, so multiple multiple synergies uh, is is what is what what i would say uh, on on the, on the entire drop shipping the other thing that i see uh, drop shipping as a model so e-commerce is going to uh, going to going to boom just just how, how big do you think e-commerce market is today 2% of entire india and in in billion dollars 10 million how much 10 million dollars 10 no no 10 billion sorry, sorry. okay million is yeah, no. sorry my bad <laughs> yeah 5 no 5 in india it's really how much Ball park. So it's about forty uh, to fifty billion dollars market. Wow. Just imagine what China's e-commerce market is today. Today. It's fifteen hundred billion. One point five trillion. 
So, uh, wow. and China is at 1.5 uh, trillion market. We are at 50 billion, right? We expect uh, to take this 50 billion uh, to be about 300, 400 billion by by 2030. That's what most of most of the estimates say. So this is going to be a huge uh, change in sort of e-commerce growing in India. And automatically as e-commerce grows, your seller ecosystem is going to grow, your fulfillment ecosystem is going to grow, your payment ecosystem is going to grow. So, uh, so drop shipping, which is more about sort of ensuring fulfillment of e-commerce, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a great uh, space to be in. Oh, wow. I think with this, like, thank you for sharing for your views, but I really wanted uh, the audience to ask the question now, like if they have that sure. open platform. I am good. Hey. Thanks for being here. Alex here. Hey. Um, I had a quick question. I think it's about beetroot, B2B e-commerce that you did. So um, what makes beetroot different and still survive now compared to ShopX, for instance? What did you do right that uh, yeah, kept it thriving? Sure. So beetroot uh, is not a B2B e-commerce business. It's a, it's a software business uh, where it sells uh, Salesforce automation software to FMCG brands and other other sort of financial services brands. So it's a software business. Uh, for software fundamentally is not a winner take all business. So uh, you would always so if you if you build a software company uh, you'll never die. Uh, so it's fundamentally like a, it's not a winner 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 take all market. Having said that, I think what we did uh, well at Beetroot and uh, kudos to my co-founder Vinay there uh, was the focus was always on building uh, the seamless, the best product possible. We are extremely product focused uh, as, as an organization at Beetroot. I think that is that is one reason why uh, clients and large brands have uh, have stuck uh, uh, with, with, with Beetroot and not gone to any, any other platform. It's, it's, it's commoditized, lot of players, not winner take all, but uh, Beetroot has a, has a product leadership in, in, in that domain. And that's why, that's why they, they do well. Mm. Hello, Angad, I'm Shrishti. Okay. And uh, as you were talking about uh, all these two, tier two, tier three cities preferences about going for value more than the convenience or other other things that they take care of. I want to understand how exactly did you take care of the marginal revenue when you were operating in such small markets. So that would also help us with our dropshipping project. So that would be really insightful. Sure, sure. So uh, Srishti, right? Srishti, the, uh, the secret sauce is to, to tap on a network uh, which has a lot of disposable time. And they want to convert their time into extra income. And that's what fundamentally brings the cost down. Let, let me give you a parallel example. Uh, do, you, do you get newspapers at your home? Yeah. Just imagine what price point and service those newspapers would have come to your home if that network of newspapers jo fekte, wo log agar nahi hote. So what was the price? The price point would have been much higher. If Swiggy delivery boys were delivering newspapers to you, you would be getting newspapers at a much higher price point. So to unlock a newspaper distribution at that price and service, you need a very different type of network, which is what all these uh, newspaper companies have built. Other parallel example is milk. You know, all of us get milk in the morning. Uh, imagine if Swiggy ka delivery boy or some other delivery boy would be going and delivering milk to everyone, the price point and service levels would have been very different. So for every uh, for every price value equation, you need a different type of network. But but the crux, the the physics behind it is that you identify a network that has a lot of disposable time and wants to convert that time into in, into extra money. So hi, uh, okay. thank you for being here. The video was extremely beautiful. Um, so my question comes from a personal experience. I was working with Flipkart in the grocery vertical. Okay. Uh, we tried expanding markets to the tier two cities, tier three cities, but because of low demand there, we had to close it down and focus on the tier one regions, right? Yeah. So how are you able to capture that demand in the tier two cities? That's the first one. Second one, I'm so sorry, um, is that today, because I was working in this vertical, I understand the amount of money that we are burning per order. 
right so how is your model helping you to you know lower it down at the same time compete sure. with the other giants there sure so uh, so to your first question on demand <coughs> uh, i think when when were you at flipkart how i i left two months back okay just left two months back what so my experience has been that uh, that the world is changing much faster than we think it is changing Uh, so when we started city mall we thought that we are doing this great social service by bringing people online e-commerce pe la rahe hain hum log ye hum log social service kar rahe hain this was pre covid days now when i go out there in the market uh, trying to understand uh, consumers i find that almost all households uh, know about e-commerce they have bought something on e-commerce at some point in time दे नो कि यार बटन दबाने से प्रोडक्ट घर पे आता है सो दैट एडुकेशन अराउंड ई कॉमर्स हैज बीन डन बाय लॉर्ड ऑफ लॉर्ड ऑफ प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक फ्लिपकार्ट एंड मीशो एंड एमेजॉन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द हाउस होल्ड बट द प्रॉब्लम इज विच इज वेर यू नो यू प्रोबली वुड हैव सॉर्ट ऑफ फेस चैलेंजेस इज हाउ डू यू यू नो ब्रिंग ग्रॉसरी ऑफ अ वेरी स्मॉल टिकट साइज तीन सौ चार उनका बिहेवियर है तीन सौ चार सौ रुपए का ऑर्डर करना बिकॉज द वॉलेट बैलेंस इज आर लो सो हाउ डू यू गेट दैट फोर हंड्रेड रुपी ऑर्डर एट द डोर स्टेप ऑफ अ कस्टमर गिव हिम वैल्यू बेटर प्राइस ऑन दैट प्रोडक्ट एंड मेक मनी इज वेयर इज वेयर द फंडामेंटल कोर प्रॉब्लम इज एंड टू बी एबल टू डू दैट यू नीड टू यू नो लाइक लाइक वी आर टॉकिंग यू नीड टू क्रिएट अ वेरी डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ नेटवर्क that is fundamentally lower cost uh so if if you are selling how you are selling me you are never you will never be able to sell to uh, tier 3 tier 4 towns and villages you have to find a fundamentally different way to be able to uh, generate demand and to fulfill demand what we do uh, we have these uh, network of micro entrepreneurs who act as our logistics last mile logistics as well as marketing partners they do a lot of evangelism in their own areas and communities so that fundamentally brings the cost structure down uh, helps us sort of be profitable at that low ticket size so that that's like the adding strategy is it hi angad hey. my name is parmeshwar thanks hey, for coming hey. so my question is every social commerce company get inspiration from chinese giant pindodu yes right so and the two things i feel which is missing in india right now is one uh, the gamified version of uh, the users using that uh, particular app and the second thing is uh, live video streaming okay. so do you think in future in india we can get inspiration from pindodu and try to implement the same or is it in your pipeline in for future sure sure so uh, when we started city mall uh we started with the exact same pindodu model uh we did it for almost a year uh, and it failed uh and we would have done like multiple experiments around product around gamifying that product around the right category category price points but fundamental na parmeshwar uh macro se bada koi cheez nahi hota business mein and if you look at chinese market and you will look at indian market Uh, Chinese is a manufacturing market, right? Uh, it's extreme high manufacturing market. So you would get products at dirt cheap price, possible in in China. <coughs> India is not a manufacturing. India is largely a trading destination. So the spread of margins to get that virality is very different uh, in China versus versus India. Uh, secondly, the entire gamified group buying is a is an evolved workflow. It's like I don't know how how many of you know about group buying, Pindwadu. Okay, so I, I'll tell you what it means. It's like कि यार ये glass है, ये glass आपको अगर आप अकेले खरीदोगे, so you will get it for hundred, but you buy it with three other people, you will get it for sixty bucks. That's what that's what you know fundamentally Pindu do uh, was trying to do. Now it, it's a highly evolved workflow, in the sense that I will get this product at sixty bucks only if I get three more people buy with me, uh, and Indian Indian janta doesn't understand coupled workflows as good as as the Chinese uh, Chinese janta, uh, and and that's why sort of pindu do in in India sort of did not work. My my fundamental belief is 
that the alpha in creating a platform is not going to be in sort of gamifying it, but focusing on the right basics of value, which is, are you giving the best price? Are you sort of consistent in, in your delivery? What are you doing around those things to be able to sort of uh, build, build modes on, on those aspects? So our basics is where, uh, is where the, the large part of the equation is. There's like a smaller part of the equation in, in gamifying, gamifying journeys. Similarly, uh, to your question on, on, on video commerce, uh, 2019, 2020, a <coughs> lot of video commerce companies had come in. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you know, know about them. Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, and, and the reason it did not fully work was because the fundamental at what product you are giving, what, what is the product, what is the price point, what are the service levels, quality. If those basics are not in place, no amount of uh, sort of form of the platform will, will sort of uh, take lead. That, that's my belief. Yeah. Thanks, Ander, for the insights. I just wanted to ask, uh, like in the tier two, tier three market, uh, the trust factor, you know, comes in when they can also touch and, you know, feel, uh, like, for example, uh, like the next stage of these micro business owners would be to have their own dukans, yeah. right? So have you thought of a lending vertical for them as well? And what, what would be the possible challenges that you see? Yeah. Good, good question. Man. Yeah. Uh, So obviously there is a market that wants touch and feel, uh, but, but there are, you know, propositions like, so Flipkart came up with COD and that is how e-commerce boomed. What COD fundamentally did was, uh, that problem of credit card and touch and feel was gone. Free returns, COD, anybody can order. So while touch and feel is still important for a large part of the market for certain categories, uh, but there are headwinds towards, towards that form of buying. While e-commerce is something that's that's always going to grow, uh, touch and feel might be there for you know probably today people uh, in their fifties and sixties probably forties, but the young young uh, young India is today okay with sort of you know touching and feeling after ordering, uh, and that's fine uh, because they haven't been wired to the offline system as much as uh, as, as as the generations before that. So uh, so I feel uh, you know fundamentally. Uh, E-commerce is, is something where the real, real tailwinds are. It's going to grow exponentially. Uh, we dabbled about an idea of sort of going offline, uh, but right now we still feel that, you know, uh, e-commerce online is, is where, where the majority of the value is. Uh, having said that, there are multiple lending is, are, are like there are multiple ways in which uh, lending can be super critical. For example, even to our micro entrepreneurs, uh, we are right now, uh, working on a product to give them uh, certain loans and lending so that they can do their businesses better even without investing in, in the working capital because they can give some uh, credit to the end consumers. They can manage their working capital better. So those are the aspects that, that we are doing. Also, we have an entire seller ecosystem at the back that, that, needs, that needs money and working capital to, to, to service us better. So uh, that, that's, a, that's like a great place to be. I will take the last question from there. Hi, Pavan here. Hey. So, uh, City Mall has greatly benefited out of the internet penetration in tier two and tier three cities in the last decade. So, with the advent of AI and machine learning coming up, do you think it can be used to push products to tier two and tier three markets uh, in the near future? So, uh, products would be going to tier two and tier three and rural, uh, irrespective of how Gen AI plays out. Uh, that is. Uh, it's, it's not an optionality there. However, uh, what I feel uh, Gen AI will do is uh, fundamentally change interfaces uh, of how we interact uh, with, the, with the phone, with the machine. Uh, today, our interaction with any application is, okay, ye button dabaya, to ye screen aega, then this screen comes, then you go here, then yeah. this screen comes here. You are sort of uh, thinking and doing at the same time. Now that thinking and doing, uh, instead of you uh, sort of executing that, the machine is going to execute that. You have to, I, I think the 
the art there would be to ask the right question to the machine if you know how to ask the right question to the machine they will do all the next order thinking and doing for you and that's a big leap uh, and that's how interfaces are going to change uh, from how we how we interact with the machine today to how how it's going to be in the future perfect Amazing! I think that was a great, great learning for all of us. Oh yeah! Thank and uh, one of the things that we have recently started and got really inspired from Yellow Coffee with Karan that we won't let you go before having a rapid fire round with us. So, okay, <laughs> I didn't know about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so let's start. And again, you have to answer, uh, you know, in less than thirty seconds. Okay. And again, we have a small, small, uh, you know, gift hamper after this. But if you give a great answer, we'll, we'll try to make it bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. So, if City Mall was a hero, what, uh, what superpowers it will have? To change colors. Okay, if, if you can explain a bit. Yeah. So, uh, to sort of. Look at the environment and adapt to the environment in the fastest way possible. Now that I know, by the way, you live in uh, Gurgaon. What is your go-to e-commerce store to buy grocery needs for yourself? <laughs> for myself, uh, apart from City Mall, uh, I go to Blinkit. Blinkit? Yes. Okay, perfect. If you have hundred million dollars, which company will you invest in? Uh, <laughs> of course. Masses <laughs> universe. Okay, let's um, let's add some masala to this now. Okay. Uh, name a Bollywood actor and an actress you would choose as a brand ambassador for City Mall. First actor. Okay, so we were doing this exercise. Uh, we'll choose uh, Akshay Kumar. Oh, and an actress. And an actress. Have you thought about it? Probably. We'll start with tick tick one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll choose an Preeti Zinta. Oh, nice. That tells you personal interest as well. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of any better. <laughs> Rank these founders: Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk. One, two, three. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh wow. Choose uh, the founder with whom would you like to go out for clubbing, fine dining, long drive? Nitin Kamath, Kunal Shah, Ashneet Grover. With among all these, what what are the three options? Three options are Nitin Kamath, Kunal Shah, Ashneet Grover, and you have to choose them for clubbing, fine dining, long drive. Okay, Ashneet with for clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nit. Kunal Shah for long drive okay. because he has a lot of stories. Okay. And what is the third one? And fine dining. Fine dining. Oh, perfect. And if you have to hire Shah Rukh Khan, what role would you offer him? At City Mall. Huh? At, At City, City Mall. Mall. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll offer him to become a community leader. Oh wow! Perfect. <laughs> with this, we'll end the fire round with you. And thank you so much for all.